Okay, this is the fourth and final example from the partial fraction decompositions um, lecture. We have uh, this rational function, which is a cubic in the numerator and a quadratic in the denominator. The very first step of this technique is to check the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator. And in this particular question, we have that the degree of the denominator is less than or equal to the degree of the numerator. And because of that, we cannot start the process of partial fraction decomposition. And so the way we remedy this is algebra on top of algebra. So, so here we go with uh, the technique to do it is called long division. All right. With numbers, it's fine. Now we have to do it with polynomials. You've done it before. Okay, let me just remind you how it works. So what you do is what's underneath goes on the outside of the division house and what's on top goes on the inside. Please be aware of any missing um, terms and hold those terms with a zero as the coefficient. Like instead of x squared plus 16, write it as x squared plus 0x plus 16. That way everything lines up nicely and it should be fine. Um, and so I like to draw this little diagram to help me figure out the process. And, and so it kind of organizes things for me. And so it's a chart, okay? And it's based off of the leading term um, in the, on the outside versus the leading term on the inside. And so I write this out where I say, okay, I have the leading term on the outside. I need the leading term on the inside. So I got to figure out backwards what to multiply by. Okay. So I have an X squared and I need an X cubed. So what do I multiply by? Um, answer, the answer to that question then becomes the first term on top of the, um, you know, in the answer. And it goes, um, if you could space it out where it goes exactly above the, the, its matching term. And so, uh, yeah, it's going to be an X. You need to multiply by X to turn X squared into X cubed. So you put that X on top of the 18 X. And then you have to distribute. You have to multiply that X by the terms that are on the outside. X times X squared and then X times 16. Hold the zero spot though. And so then that is then what goes underneath the x cubed minus 2x squared and plus 18x. We put this polynomial here, x cubed plus 0x squared plus 16x. But the way division, long division works, we are subtracting that. I like to put it all in parentheses and, and just mentally distribute the minus across. If you want to, you could actually physically put the minus in there too. It just helps me to recognize that I'm, I'm doing it um, with this, this kind of way. It helps me out. So it's built to set up, it's set up and built to be the fact that the first term cancels. So now we're on to the second term. We have a negative 2x squared minus nothing, x squared. So that's a negative 2x squared. Then we have an 18x minus a 16x. So that's a 2x. And then the next thing you do is carry down the next term over from the original um, um, numerator. And so then you start the process all over again. You have an x squared on the outside. The leading term now on the inside is a negative 2x squared. And you want to turn the x squared into negative 2x squared by multiplying by something. And that's something that you multiply by is a negative 2. Pretty straightforward. Okay. So then we put that negative 2 above the constant term. And we distribute. We multiply that negative 2 by all the terms on the outside. Negative 2 times x squared. Negative 2 times 32. And that's what goes right underneath the uh, current um, negative 2x squared plus 2x minus 29. Make sure you use parentheses and minus that, though. It's built to be that the squared terms cancel. But what about the other terms? It's going to be 2x minus nothing, so 2x. And be very careful here. Negative 29 minus a negative 32 is like plus 32. So it's going to be a 3. Well, how do you know when this is over? You keep doing this thing. How do you know when you're done? You stop when the degree is less than the, de the denominator's degree, basically. And so we have it here. And that's strictly less than. I'm not talking about equal to, I'm just like strictly less than. So this is a linear. Your denominator is a quadratic. You stop. 
And then what you tag this as is the remainder. That's your remainder. Okay. All right. Great. So what do you do with remainders? Remember how we, you know, back when you grade school and you did long division, you write your remainder on top of your divisor, the thing that you were dividing by. And so we have the X minus two. That's like the whole number part. And then plus the remainder on top of your divisor. And it's just another way of writing your function. The integral on the on the original function is the same integral on this altered version of it. It's the same function though. And it'll be much easier to integrate. We can integrate X all day long. We can integrate minus two all day long. So then the issue then comes, what about this, this fraction that we now have? Okay. And you see the denominator, X squared plus 16. Now X squared minus 16 is very different than X squared plus 16. You see, x squared plus 16 is an irreducible quadratic. But there's no other terms. You don't have to partial fraction decompose it. There's, there's, there's no other terms there. This is the bx plus c that is on top of, or ax plus b, that is on top of the, the irreducible quadratic. And so in this instance then, if you had another term underneath with the x squared plus 16, then we'd have to partial fraction decompose. Okay, and so um, since it's the only term, there's no need to use partial fraction decomposition. And like in the previous example, when you have an irreducible quadratic, let it be u, take its derivative and match what you have with your current numerator, that's all. And so if, 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 if the numerator was 2x by itself, it'd be 1 over u du, we'd have the natural log of u. Um, our denominator is not just a 2x, though, unfortunately. Um, our numerator, sorry. Uh, our numerator is 2x plus 3. But the 2x is there, though. So when you have an irreducible quadratic without the, with, with the, uh, the x term missing like this, where you just have the squared term and the constant term, this is, how the, you know, this is how things work out for you, basically. When it comes to the bx plus c, and um, uh, yeah, you just break it apart after you, after you see that, you know, uh, find out what the denominator's derivative is, and you just break it apart. 2x on top of that would give, be the natural log, and then 3 on top of that, we have to figure that part out. Okay. Break the numerator into those two parts. So we already know how to deal with the 2x on top of x squared plus 16. That's just the natural log of the denominator. What about 3 on top of x squared plus 16? I think my animation is off here, but uh, that's okay. Uh, that, that, you know, if the 16 was a one, you'd have exactly arctan. And so you use the formula that you have um, the, the value of uh, the square root of the 16 is it then goes in the formula as a here, and it's one fourth the arctan of x over a. So one fourth, the, or one, a, one over a, the arctan of x over a. So one over four, the arctan of x over four, that three that was a numerator, so what? It just comes out front. Three fourths the arctan of x over four. Uh, integrate x, you get x squared over two. Integrate minus two, you get minus two x. Integrate two x over x squared plus sixteen, and you get natural log of x squared plus sixteen. You don't need absolute value bars. I mean, x squared plus sixteen is definitely positive. You know, you square something and add sixteen to it, guarantee it'll be a positive. And so you could drop those absolute value bars and turn them into parentheses. And then that's it. That is your antiderivative. So watch out for when the numerator and denominator have the following relationship as far as their degrees. When the degree to, to start partial fractions, the degree of the denominator needs to be less than. I'm sorry, degree of the numerator needs to be less than or um, gosh, let's get it right. The degree of the denominator needs to be strictly greater than the degree of the numerator for you to start partial fractions. When the degree of the denominator is equal to the degree of the numerator, or when it's the other way around, oh man, what did, I, did I say it right? The degree of the denominator needs to be more than the degree of the numerator to start. When the degree of the denominator is equal to the degree of the numerator, when the degree of the denominator is less than the degree of the numerator, that's when you have to do long division. I'm sorry if I might have misspoke there. But anyway, that's it. We're all done. Um, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'm here to help. And uh, we'll see you in the next video set.